Since the dawn of civilization, humans have looked to the future to ponder what would happen down the road. In the fantastic world of cartoons, where anything can happen, it's inevitable that things meant to be taken as parts of fiction actually turned out to be right on the money. Whether by chance, logic, or crystal ball, these cartoons have managed to glimpse a picture of a future that came to be. My name is Johnny Kasurik, and today on Channel Frederator, we're counting the top five cartoons that predicted the future. Let's get started. Number one, The Simpsons predict Siegfried and Roy and the tiger attacks. <laughs> the Simpsons have gotten a lot of credit for predicting the future, but one of the more on-point moments is Anastasia, the tiger, and her handlers, Gunther and Ernst. They're an obvious parody of Siegfried and Roy, magicians who are notorious for working with tigers. In the Simpsons episode, Anastasia snaps and viciously mauls the two. While it wasn't quite as pronounced, Roy Horn of Siegfried and Roy found himself in a similar position when a tiger grabbed him by the neck and drug him off stage, severing a major artery and leaving Roy in critical condition. He would suffer partial paralysis from this attack. There has been some debate as to what exactly happened. The entertainers claim that Roy had a stroke and that the tiger Manticore, which is a fantastic name for for a tiger, only drug him off stage in an attempt to protect him. But you would think that our fluffy tiger friend would let up on the bite when it started tasting blood. It's hard to guess at the intentions of a wild animal, of course, but either way, by the time Roy's neck was shredded, the Simpsons were years ahead of the curve. Number two, Inspector Gadget and the computer book. Unfortunately, no, we're not telling you that you can augment yourself with Inspector Gadget's gadgets. Well, not yet, anyway. <sighs> really want gadget skates. What we are telling you is that Gadget's daughter Penny probably went on to be an executive at Apple or something because she invented the tablet in the 70s. Penny has a device that she calls the computer book. It's a portable computer cleverly disguised as a book. It can navigate and look up information via an encyclopedia program. It's an honest to goodness iPad, except bulkier and less functional. Not only that, but consider what a lot of people call laptops computer books. If it were predicting the tablet of today, it would at the very least need to have Angry Birds on it, even still. Most shows that predict some sort of future technology go for ridiculous space travel or teleportation devices or, and I'm not prepared to let this go, kicking rad gadget skates. I would seriously amputate my legs if I could replace them with prosthetics that I could turn into roller skates. As I was saying, the computer book is a remarkably down-to-earth invention, which is why it would probably come to pass. Number three, Freakazoid predicted itself. If you don't know who Freakazoid is, then I feel sorry for you. Freakazoid was an outstanding Spielberg cartoon of the 90s. It featured Dexter Douglas, who after being zapped into the internet, becomes a very spastic superhero, Freakazoid. Freakazoid didn't predict a technology or an event. Freakazoid predicted the internet culture. Seriously, he embodies the quick attention span and strong emotional reactions we've come to take for granted on the internet. But all this was created at a time when the idea of the internet was still pretty new. Everyone was still using their dial-up modems if they were using the internet at all. Let's put it this way. Freakazoid may have gotten his powers from an AOL trial disc. I think the best example of his internet antics come from his sidekick, Cosgrove, the no-nonsense cop that often helps Freakazoid but also distracts him. Hey Freakazoid, you wanna watch a bear ride a motorcycle? Freakazoid is sidetracked from saving the world by watching an animal do something silly. If that isn't emblematic of the world of YouTube, I don't know what is. Also, as the theme song says, he basically saves the day by being an internet troll before the term ever even existed. Number four, Futurama and the vacuum tubes. One of the goofiest modes of travel ever, the vacuum tubes of the year 3000 could take the average citizen all over the place at surprising speed. It's completely impractical on the show. For one, it's not at all clear how the tubes link up. Is there like a, a switchboard station? Complicated maps? I, does each tube have only one exit destination? How do they breathe in the vacuum tubes? They travel face first, don't they just face plant when they land on the other side? Technology is absurd. Which is why it's so crazy that there are plans to make vacuum tubes a real form of transportation. You've probably heard of bullet trains, trains that are capable of traveling at high speeds by using powerful magnets that just let the train levitate above the ground. Well, unfortunately, these run into the pesky problem of air resistance, so they can't get to truly ludicrous speeds. However, if you could situate a pressurized train inside of a vacuum tube, you could eliminate drag and rocket people across the country in absurdly fast times. This is the core idea behind the Hyperloop, and test tracks have been announced. Probably won't ever be like it is in Futurama, but the concept of a vacuum tube is actually sound, and it could actually be a new and fantastic form of transportation in the very near future. Plus, it's really cool to imagine traveling in the same way the tubes at the bank work. Number five, 
Dragon Ball Z and the Scouter. The moment Google Glass was announced, I'm sure DBZ fans everywhere had dreams of tinting a large lens and screaming about power levels. Oh, he's got a power level of a 9000! It's silly, sure, but it's also correct. It can't detect power levels yet, which may have something to do with the fact that power level is not a metric that can be measured, but the Scouter was also useful in tracking the Dragon Balls. Again, not a real thing, but Google Glasses do assist with navigation using augmented reality and can give you readouts on things like the weather and the time, meaning that they can do a lot of real-world analogs to what we see in Dragon Ball Z. It's still expensive technology, so all but the wealthiest of Saiyan princes are likely to have this kind of cash lying around. But in five years' time, perhaps we'll all be using smart glass to make our lives easier while reciting what will be a decade-old meme. Thank you for watching Tuned Up, where we cover everything you've ever wanted to know about your favorite cartoons. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy some of the other videos on our channel. And if there's something you'd like to see next, you can call us at our phone number, 917-408-3733. If we really like your voice message, it might appear on a video. So go ahead, give us a call, and remember, Frederator loves you.